Radio Tubers, episode three, fuses. How do I fuse my cells? How do I fuse my packs? And I might run into the cabling and stuff I use as well on this one. So if you haven't watched the other two, sketch back and check the link up up here for the other two videos. So basically, build my packs. We run through the bus bars and stuff last time. A few questions on the bus bars and stuff last time and how I can do the crimping and stuff like that and that I can actually solder into these but I I did solder once and then everyone told me I shouldn't do it now people are telling me I can do it so for now I'm just gonna not do it but what I did notice is a lot of people actually just instead of using the um, the proper tool and you know I thought you know buy the proper tool 50 bucks off eBay or something like that and um, to make those crimps and then people said well hit it with a hammer Kind of made sense really when you think about it and to be honest that's what i actually did after some of them had failed us whacked them down with a hammer and um made a positive connection again so hopefully that's good enough and as you all know i do keep an eye on this sort of stuff anyway um also we had somebody else say that these these clips hit these um end terminals now they're 35 millimeters by anything i got a bunch here somebody donated me a whole bunch so i got little i got big um there's all different sizes. But what someone said is you can get a bit of copper pipe, a bit of recycled copper pipe, flatten down one end, drill a hole through it, and you can make your own. And you don't have to buy them. Because these aren't cheap, but I think for the strength of them, I think they work well. Maybe they're the ones that are referring to that you need to actually solder up because it hasn't got the, the wall strength in the, in the copper pipe. Who knows? But plenty of different ways to do that, and you can do it nice and cheaply. Right, let's get to the fuses. The fuse wire itself, I use, well, originally, I used 0.22 of a millimetre or something. It's very, very small. Winding wire. That's very, very fine. You can hardly focus on that. But the problem with that was I had to burn off the enamel coating. And that, in turn, killed a lot of my soldering iron tips. It just destroyed them because I had to scrape the soldering iron tip backwards and forwards. And it just, it just tore them apart. Once I stopped using this, my soldering tips stopped dying really quickly. And again, they're all in the earlier videos, but this is what I'm doing now. So what am I doing now? We're using this wire, link up here, and it is, I don't even really know what it's called, but I got it off Amazon. Now this is the wire that I sent to Average Joe. I tested this back in the day with a really redneck setup and what I worked out is this this blew in between five and six amps now I sent this same stuff all the way to America for average Joe to have a crack at and his test said 19 amps so it's clear the way we were testing there was some difference uh, I did send him exactly the same wire he he tried to use the same lengths and stuff that I used so if you're gonna buy wire I'll I'll recommend I'll put up I'll put up here in my Amazon link where I bought this from. It's up to you to actually test whether it suits your situation, and that's the big thing that we're doing here. It's my system works for me. Does it work for you? That's what you've got to work out. Um, so the link will be up on top. Of course, with the packs themselves, what I've done is because here, uh, which side is it here? Ugh. This is the positive side, right? So I only fuse the positive side of my packs. And of course, I can hang on to this and it won't break on the positive side. Now there's a reason for that. Because what I have done is I've used this wire here that I said in the last one. So I've used my bus bar material, just one strand of it, and then put it along the top. So that makes this strong. Because if I had the fuses up along here, it would it would fail. I would not have any strength in that whatsoever. So I've done that there. But what I have done is turned around on the other side. And it's really hard to see because this pack has been beaten around. But you can see I've done the fuses up here. Now I rejoined it in the middle just so you can sort of see it. But I've got the fuse wire across there, which doesn't need any mechanical strength. And then below it... I've got all the normal wire on the negative side and then again at the other end um, you've got 
the nice and strong bit up the top and then you've got the fuse wire on the back so that is how I've done it it's all just soldered on it's not spot welded I think Daniel from DIY Tech and Repairs is working on how to how to actually spot weld these little wires on I think it's a good idea now one of the reasons why I never did it was one I don't have a spot welder two I had to follow my ethos of doing this as cheap as humanly possible okay it's all about trying to get this done with the materials that I'd been donated given I could purchase I could afford all that sort of stuff because let's face it there is nothing that I've tried to pay full price for in this thing I mean I search for literally months and months and months and months and months at a time just to get solar panels um, and then I bought a few solar panels and sold them and for a little bit more than I and I sort of bartered and sort of worked my way up there so it's all about price now what I've also done is I did a lot of looking online and stuff like that for cable. Now this this joins all of my batteries together. This is actually red. It's exactly the same as my yellow, orange stuff I've got down there. But it is a 35 square millimeter welding cable, right? It's fine strand and then it's double shielded. So it's got this white plastic here and then it's got the cover over the outside. And the terminals go straight on. Okay, and the terminals go straight on. And the terminals go straight on. Rightio. <laughs> That's a dog's breakfast. <laughs> but the terminals do go on well. And then they crimp on very solidly. I've never actually had one of them fail or get hot at all. And of course, I put when I when I when I do this, I try and run the heat shrink up to here. So I've got to get a camera angle on that. So just where that line is there. I run the heat shrink from there all the way down so there's a there's another level of mechanical strength to that join and also a little bit of extra safety now in the early days I went all the way down to here I've since found out you need to actually see down there because you can see down oxidization and stuff like that so apparently that's a good idea to leave that hole free again the interwebs will tell me differently but that's what I do so you tubers I hope that helps you out and gives you a little bit of insight into fusing. Um, of course, this is only the first level of fusing. So I've got 4,480 fuses as my first line of defense. Then I've got HRC fuses on the actual bank cell pack of batteries. Let's get into that again. So tubers, I hope that helps you out. I hope you understand a little bit more about how I do my fusing. If you do your fusing a different way, comment below, link to your YouTube channel, do a video and link it below so other people can see how you do it. And as a, as a, as a community, we can get better and do this safer. Anyway, tubers, thank you very much for tuning in. I'll see you on the next one.